Hey guys, welcome to part two of my DVD collection. Let's get right into it. We have Halloween, the two disc limited edition from Anchor Bay. This is the version which includes the television version. This is the limited edition number 20,535. THX digitally mastered. Now the reason for this edition coming out was that the first pressing of Halloween was a disaster to say the least. So they got back in there and did things the right way. And here we have a few inserts, chapter stops, and then uh, for the television version as well. And you could see the chapter stops are highlighted for the television version. Board review, you fooled them, Michael. The evil is gone and borrowing clothes. Now, I think my favorite scene of the television version would be when Michael escapes and you could see sister written on the door as well as that board review where Loomis is trying to keep him in the institution. Also included is a postcard here and you have a booklet. Whenever this came out, late 90s, early 2000s, they have not stopped releasing this film. This was the definitive edition, and it seems like every, you know, five years or so, they make another definitive edition. Halloween H2O is our next film, which you could see in my Halloween Complete Collection video. I was just looking back at that video, and I was like, man, this kind of doesn't look too good. But until I redo that video, you could check that out. Heat, a Los Angeles crime saga. Not my favorite movie. That ending at the airport, mm, kind of cheesy. I guess it's famous for that good robbery scene. So here you go, Heat. My favorite, one of my favorites right here is Heathers. So another Anchor Bay special edition here. Anchor Bay really used to kill it with the special editions. They were kind of like the Arrow video of the DVD days. As far as taking care of these cult films, you know, they had an awesome Suspiria three disc edition. And here's another one, Heathers. Hell Ride, Quentin Tarantino presents Hell Ride. I remember seeing this in the theater and I guess I just would buy it off of the strength of Quentin Tarantino Presents, but I mean, it's just like one of those grindhouse movies. It's an okay watch. Another Anchor Bay special edition of The Hills Have Eyes. I always liked how the discs were brown here. Then you got a booklet as well. Not my favorite Wes Craven movie, but this is a pretty good edition. It's too bad they didn't give Last House on the Left a good edition on the DVD days. You know, I remember the UK had the good edition on DVD and we had to wait until Blu-ray. But here is The Hills Have Eyes. Hostel, part two. I don't have part one. No, mm, I don't know. I like part two better, I guess because, you know, this scene the Mrs. Bathory scene. I always liked Wolf Creek better than Hostel, and then I enjoyed Hostel too better because it, cause it was like the girl's turn to get killed. Hot Shots, a good spoof movie from the 90s. Now, unfortunately, this movie didn't earn the reputation like Airplane or The Naked Gun did. I mean, this did have a sequel. So there was Hot Shots and Hot Shots Part Two. But yeah, no one really talks about this movie nowadays. Okay, I usually bring this up. I brought this in the Best Picture collection, in my recent LGBT collection. So you have The Hours. I used to really like watching this one. I was just talking about how it would be so cool if Rob Zombie would make a kid's film. And I read he just got signed on for The Munsters. So here is... House of a Thousand Corpses. Pretty good DVD edition here. Not my favorite film. I like Devil's Rejects way better, but uh, here you go. Another crazy, uh, what's it? David Hess is in this. Here's House on the Edge of the Park. I guess this is kind of like an Italian. Yeah, this movie's pretty messed up. So since I always liked David, uh, I wanna call him David Lynch, David Hess from Last House on the Left. So here's another type of those movies. Not a fun movie to watch, but it's like disco and rape. So 
If those two things uh, sound good to you, check out House on the Edge of the Park. I got this recently in, I think, Goodwill. I don't like uh, stoner comedies too much, but I think I, I, I just wanted to check this out again and give it another chance. I'm not too familiar with this movie, but I love the, the Bob Dylan song, Hurricane, which is the story of the boxer. So I'll have to really sit down and, and watch this movie one day. It's just been in the in the collection in my family's home, so I kind of just took it from them. Now, I love this movie, So Bad It's Good. We have Hush with Jessica Lange and Gwyneth Paltrow. Kind of like a Lifetime movie. It's, you know, like, don't take my son away from me type of movies. And pretty famous where, like, the trailer, there's so many things in the trailer that are that didn't make the final cut of the film. And a, a fun story, when I saw this in the movie theater, the, the projector broke and the film burnt out. So that was a, a cool little experience that happened to me when I saw Hush in the movie theater. All right, another messed up movie is I Spit on Your Grave. Now, how I got into this movie, I usually mention it's because Joe Bob Briggs, when he had Monster Vision, he would say that the three scariest movies were Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Last House on the Left, and I Spit on Your Grave. And this movie was too much for me. Even though I made it, this was like the first time that I felt dirty after watching a movie. And I was a child, so I really had no business watching this crap. But it is like important in the horror cult exploitation genre. It's been remade, so you, you gotta check out this movie. And also Joe Bob has a commentary on here. So worth watching for all you exploitation heads out there. I spit on your grave. The Incredible Journey. Now, I loved Homeward Bound. I grew up on the Homeward Bound film from the 90s, so whenever I found out that there was an original, I sought out that and, you know, grabbed it because it's a, it's a great heartwarming story. The Incredible Journey. I think this is Quentin Tarantino's best film, quite honestly, Inglorious Bastards. Like, as far as what makes a, a Hollywood movie, I think this kind of had it all. Whereas Pulp Fiction was one of the greatest indie movies. I think this is like his magnum opus. You know, this would have been his uh, best picture winner. You know, I thought he got back on track with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but I think this is Honestly, his best film, Inglorious Bastards. Now, just like I think Inglorious Bastards is Tarantino's best film, this is my personal favorite, is Jackie Brown with Pam Greer. And this is a great addition here, as well as Pulp Fiction. They really, you know, showed the love with these special edition DVDs here. I love this poster here. This is a good black exploitation poster because you know, Pam Greer from Coffee, Foxy Brown. So I feel like this movie is Tarantino's letter to that. They play the Coffee soundtrack throughout this film. Like I saw Jackie Brown first and then Pam Greer had a original Gangsters. So eventually over time, I would do the research, found out about Coffee, Foxy Brown, Sheba Baby. I love this one here, great cast. Great soundtrack. This is more of a realistic movie, whereas Pulp Fiction is like creative and imaginative. This is more like real world. So I think that's why people really resonate with this movie. And there's a lot of people who don't. They think this is the, his worst film ever. But unfortunately, they don't see what we see. So get into it, Jackie Brown. And also Robert Forrester, I gotta give it up to his performance in this film. One of the special features of this edition and on the Blu-ray they carried it over is all their trailers from their heyday in the 70s. Just wanted to mention that. I'll also try to link up my Friday the 13th video, which is a better video than my Halloween one. And since I always loved Jason Goes to Hell, I think this is the R-rated cut though. For some reason I... I needed to get it. That's it. Jawbreaker. I love this movie. I think I just bought the DVD because it has the special features, which the Blu-ray doesn't have. It's kind of like a Heathers for the late 90s. But this movie didn't do too good when it came out. It, it was just like on video and over time, it gained kind of a cult status. But I really like this one too. It just has that look, that late 90s bright, colors just a good movie to watch short and sweet not the best movie either so this is kind of like a love letter to those high school heathers 
Jawbreaker. I really like this one, Joe. It's hard to explain this film. It has Peter Boyle and Susan Sarandon. So Susan Sarandon like ends up with the wrong crowd and her father forms this friendship with Joe, okay? So the father and Joe both like have had it with the, the scumbags of the world, okay? And wanna kinda be vigilantes or, or something like that. A movie that they could only make in the 70s. So check this out, Joe. Another HBO classic, Just One of the Guys. I should have included this in my LGBT video. So Terry <laughs> wants to get into the school paper, but the, the teacher, look, there she is as a girl. The teacher doesn't like believe in her. So she decides to dress up as a boy and go into the competitor school to get into the newspaper. Great movie from the 80s. Great scene at the end where she shows her tits. So <laughs> check this out, just one of the guys. A great controversial movie from the 90s is Kids. I talked about this when I'm speaking about Bully. So yes, I actually remember seeing this as a, as a kid too. Shouldn't have been watching it, but I had an older sister, so uh, everyone was kind of talking about this movie. Kind of had to see this movie, so this is kind of like an AIDS movie too. It was like a response to the AIDS epidemic because you know, you have kids just running around wild in the streets of New York City. So here from 1995, kids. So here is the last house on the left, UK edition that I was talking about. What we have now on the Arrow Blu-ray, they had in the late 90s, early 2000s. Wes Craven was inspired by Ingmar Bergman's The Virgin Spring. So this is an updated version of that. And this film was also remade. Now, the first time I saw this movie, like I told you, as a child, I was able to get this at the video store. Uh, the rated and the unrated both floated around on videotape. And I actually remember showing my friends this for the first time, like it was me and three other friends. And we were all kind of like making fun of it because you know, it's so old and the cops, while well, they're making cake while the girls are getting attacked. So I remember making fun of this movie the first time I watched it, because I was like in eighth grade. But um, since I rented the video, I went back home and I was like, I really watched it. And I was like, man, I love this movie. <laughs> so yeah, I was just always into Last House on the Left. So that was the UK version of Last House on the Left. And like I told you, it was remade. And this has to be, in my opinion, one of the best remakes of that whole time. You know, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare, Hills Have Eyes. I thought it was just so well done. The only bad part of this movie was the ending. Her and Junior ended up together and it was just like, huh? That was too much of a Disney ending for such a vicious movie. But I highly recommend uh, watching the remake. It's, you know, just as brutal as the original. It really keeps that integrity. One of the best remakes, honestly. I haven't seen this one in a long time, Leaving Las Vegas. Two alcoholics, I believe. I have to really, you know, sit down and Watch this again one day. Another Clint Eastwood, this along with Flags of Our Fathers was almost like a double feature, uh, uh, 2005, 2006, but this one is the better one. And this is a foreign film. So subtitles, whereas Flags of Our Fathers is an American film. Little Children, this has to do Either someone is accused of being a sexual predator or a child sexual predator, something along those lines. So this is like a pretty disturbing movie. Little Children. I actually saw this one in the movie theater, The Long Kiss Goodnight with Gina Davis and Samuel L. Jackson with the character Charlie Baltimore. She has like amnesia. She's like a, a stay at home mom. But then she gets into this accident and then becomes this like gangster hit woman. <laughs> so I used to watch this all the time. So I'll have to sit down and give it another watch. The Long Kiss Goodnight. The Look Who's Talking series, the uh, Talking Baby series with Kirstie Alley and John Travolta. Even though part three took a turn with the dogs, I still, I still like that one. I like all of them. So here you go from the 80s and 90s, the Look Who's Talking series. Another black exploitation classic, which is The Mac with Richard Pryor and Max Julian as Goldie. 
Made in America, Whoopi Goldberg and Ted Danson. <sighs> What is this about again? Uh, her daughter thinks he's the father through a sperm donor. I don't know. We're kind of a weird plot, but just like a funny movie. Mallrats. Not my favorite Kevin Smith movie, but just watchable. Yeah, I like uh, Chasing Amy way better, but this is a cool little addition here. So I never bought that Arrow Blu-ray because this just isn't one of my favorite movies. And then we got two Matrix films, The Matrix and then Matrix Reloaded. Melinda and Melinda from Woody Allen. I don't have much to say about this movie, but since I like Woody Allen, I just added it to the collection. Mermaids, one of my favorite movies. I brought this out in my VHS collection. A coming of age tale about Winona Ryder and her troubled relationship with her mother. Her mother packs up and moves and is a pretty independent woman in the 60s. And Winona Ryder is trying to find herself. She wants to be a nun, but she also wants to lose her virginity. So this is a great movie. I love watching this movie. A chick flick, a lifetime movie, but it's a great one, Mermaids. Ms. 45, another cult exploitation film in the same vein as I Spit on Your Grave, where a woman is assaulted and then she becomes a vigilante and goes out killing people on the streets of New York City. Ms. 45. Mulholland Drive from David Lynch. And in this DVD edition, the insert includes the clues to unlocking the mystery of Mulholland Drive, which I haven't really figured it out yet. I'll read you some of the clues. Pay particular attention in the beginning of the film. At least two clues are revealed before the credits. Notice appearances of the red lampshade. Can you hear the title of the film that Adam Kesher is auditioning actresses for? Is it mentioned again? An accident is a terrible event. Notice the location of the accident. Who gives a key and why? Notice the robe, the ashtray, the coffee cup. What is felt, realized, and gathered at the club Silencio? Did talent alone help Camilla? Notice the occurrences surrounding the man behind Winkies. Where is Aunt Ruth? That's pretty much the only special feature you got with the first edition of Mulholland Drive. This also had dual covers. This was the other cover, but I liked this one better with Naomi Watts. Napoleon Dynamite. Now this is probably like a newer comedy classic. You know, I kind of don't think they make movies as funny as they used to, but for a PG movie, this one is pretty good. Napoleon Dynamite. Narc with Jason Patrick and Ray Liotta. Now, if you like gritty crime films from the 70s, you gotta check this one out from 2002, NARC. Nell with Jodie Foster. So I actually used to like watching this one on HBO. Jodie Foster is like a woods woman who speaks in gibberish and dances around in the woods. So here is Nell. Night of the Living Dead. Now this was another special edition since they had previously released a DVD that was below standards. I remember that original Night of the Living Dead DVD where it had like a colorized version and it had like inserted scenes into the original film. So it was a disaster, I remember that, but then they got it together and this is a really good release right here of George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. Almost forgot about my Nightmare on Elm Street box set from New Line Cinema, which includes all original seven films and also the Nightmare series Encyclopedia, which includes The Labyrinth, which is probably the best and worst special feature in this box set. It's like a maze and you have to go through this maze to access all the special features. So while the idea is pretty creative, it becomes annoying for someone who just wants to watch special features and not go through a maze. A Nightmare on Elm Street. A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Wes Craven's New Nightmare. The Nightmare Series Encyclopedia. 
and a booklet. So out of all these, I would have to say New Nightmare is probably my favorite in the series, but since that is kind of like a meta movie, I'll go with part four. Part four is definitely my favorite in the series. It's when Freddy is how we know him best. Funny, scary, it's got great kills, it's got the soul pizza, it's got the cockroach kill. I love part four. Even though most people choose part three as the fan favorite. So until Scream Factory decides to go in there, remaster all the films and get us some good special features where we don't have to go through a maze, this set still kind of holds up. So the Nightmare on Elm Street box set from New Line Cinema. Notes on a Scandal, Judy Dench and Kate Blanchett. So this is probably during my Kate Blanchett phase along with Veronica Guerin. I just like her as an actress. So here's Notes on a Scandal. Nothing But Trouble, a weird movie from the 90s and this would play on HBO all the time. And yeah, I love that weird roller coaster that like eats the people. <laughs> this movie is just trippy, weird, funny. Don't know how else to explain it. They just stumble upon this house of horrors and but it's just a really funny movie. Nothing but trouble. The Omen, the original Omen from the 70s, not my favorite horror film, but this is a classic, Damien, The Devil's Spawn. So here it is from the 70s, The Omen. This actually has pretty good special features, so I'm gonna have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to sit down and watch this. There's a 46 minute documentary, there's a commentary by Richard Donner. It's not a bad movie, it's just out of all the classic horror movies, this just doesn't hit me as much as all the other ones. All right, these next few films I brought out in my LGBT collection, which is Party Monster with Macaulay Culkin and Seth Green. Pecker with Edward Furlong and Christina Ricci, directed by John Waters. He is a photographer, an amateur photographer, and breaks out, makes it big, and goes to the big city to try to make it happen. So this is a great movie, Pecker. And I always liked this movie, Phantoms. It's like a slow burn sci-fi film. I don't even know <laughs> what the movie is really about. Something taking over the town, and then the town, like, goes dark, it's a blackout, I don't know, but I always like watching this movie from the Dean Koontz novel, Phantoms. The opposite of The Omen, I always loved this movie, Poltergeist. So for a PG movie, this movie is like pretty hardcore. <laughs> Especially that one scene where the guy is like tearing off his face. Now, this movie was scary compared to The Witches, which is another movie people are always saying that traumatized them as a as a kid now i would agree with them on this one poltergeist is really scary so still holds up for a pg movie here you go toby hooper steven spielberg who who did it who knows they say toby hooper did it so here you go poltergeist porkies from the 80s so this is probably like american pie before american pie teenage sex comedies that they don't make anymore. Porkies. Private Parts, Howard Stern's Private Parts. About Howard Stern's Rise to the Top. Excellent biopic here. There you go, Private Parts. Another guilty pleasure here, Psycho. Now, this is Gus Van Sant's remake. So when this film was originally, oh look, I kept, <laughs> I was wondering what, what I did with the original Psycho DVD. So I kept the booklet, but I got rid of the, I got rid of the case and the book. I was, I was wondering, I was like, I knew, this was one of my very first DVDs, was the original Psycho DVD and the Halloween Anchor Bay that I um, told you about looked terrible. So the remake, Gus Van Sant's Psycho, yes, when it came out, it was very controversial because it was just a big no-no to remake Alfred Hitchcock. If you could believe it or not, it was a big freaking deal that this movie was being remade and it flopped, everyone hated it, but I really liked it. I mean, I knew that it wasn't Alfred Hitchcock and I was just 
I, I was a, a kid. I was a freshman in high school. So yes, I was just so excited that Psycho was like on the big screen because I, I loved the original Hitchcock film. So you should give this film a chance. I think the production design is top notch. The cinematography is amazing. So just check this out as like a college project. And I mean, compared to what we get today, this movie actually did it right. It kept its integrity. And I, I really don't know what else I could say, except that it just gets too hated on, especially to what we have today. This is what started it all. If it wasn't for Psycho, you probably wouldn't have all the terrible remakes you have today. So I don't know, do we say thanks or no thanks? Here it is, Gus Van Sant's Psycho, Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. So what hasn't been said about this movie? So here is the extra special edition, like Jackie Brown, a two disc DVD special edition. Comes with a Jack Rabbit Slim's menu and a booklet. Unfortunately, it didn't come with a poster. So like I say, what can I say that hasn't been said about this movie? But I will tell you that I actually saw this movie in the movie theater as a kid. So I have a great, wonderful memory. My father took me to see this Thanksgiving night, 1994, still remember it. So yes, I was there. I saw Pulp Fiction in the movie theater. Punch Drunk Love. Adam Sandler and this is Paul Thomas Anderson the director of Boogie Nights and this was his follow-up film this is kind of a weird movie man Adam Sandler is like awkward as hell and then he has a bunch of sisters and he's just he's like a loser he gets mixed up with these people they're trying to like almost like identity theft like stealing from him yeah this movie gets kind of weird so you could see him and all his sisters there race for your life Charlie Brown now out of the those original Peanuts films this one is definitely my favorite lots of fun memories watching this on HBO and I just love this old animation style and it takes place at a summer camp so you just have those feel-good vibes race for your life Charlie Brown Radio Flyer with Elijah Wood. Kind of a interesting little movie because his brother is getting abused by their father, stepfather, something like that. So they kind of make a, a plan to escape using the Radio Flyer. Such a good movie. Sad movie, but still a, a cute, cute movie. The Rage Carry 2. Now, I really liked this one. It's a ripoff of the original Carry. When I saw this in the theater, it, it's like I'm a sucker for when they show the original film clips. So, like this film and Halloween H2O, they show clips of the original films. So, even if it's just a, a quick little flash on the screen of the original carry it's like oh man that, that's so cool and not only that but this this has some pretty good kills it gets pretty gory at the end so like it's just like carry it's an hour of drama and then the killing scene happens so from 1999 the rage carry 2 reservoir dogs with mr pink and they have like each of them has their own cover so I got the Mr. Pink cover. Not one of my favorite Tarantino films, but important nonetheless. I wonder if all this merchandise is still available. It has action figures, t-shirts, posters, Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, used to watch this one all the time. <laughs> Yeah, just a, a, a drug movie and Jared Leto is always, you know, stealing from his mother, played by Ellen Bernstein. Yeah, good movie, Requiem for a Dream. The Ring with Naomi Watts. So this, for a PG-13, I thought this is actually pretty good. And it's because of that VHS tape that they show. Otherwise, 
the movie falls into PG-13 territory. And it's really because of this movie that, you know, we have all those horrible PG-13 movies we have now. So here is The Ring from 2002. Rosemary's Baby. Now this is another horror classic that I love along with The Exorcist, Psycho. So this is a good one with Mia Farrow and John Cassavetes directed by Roman Polanski about a witchcraft coven in living in an apartment complex in New York City. Run Lola Run. So I was introduced to this in college and you know, communicating through film and video where you just watch movies. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and you would watch all the, the great movies that you never got to see. So here is another one, Run Lola Run. Great editing in this one. So yeah, check this out. Secret Window with Johnny Depp, uh, a Stephen King short story, not considered one of the greatest or good for that matter, but I remember enjoying uh, watching this one. National Lampoon Senior Trip, another great movie I used to just love watching as a kid. Serial Mom, one of my very favorite movies from John Waters with Kathleen Turner. The Shipping News. Along with Gosford Park, I used to just blind buy these movies and never watch them. And I love Julianne Moore, so I'll have to uh, sit down and watch this one day. Sideways. Sleepy Hollow. Snoopy Come Home. Sphere. The Stepford Wives. Sugar Hill. Now there is a black exploitation horror film called Sugar Hill, but this is like a gangster film from the 90s. All right, so now we got my Texas Chainsaw Massacre collection. So here is one of the releases with the meat packaging. You can kind of feel the uh, ground beef there. The two disc steel book from Dark Sky. The remake. The Next Generation with Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger. My personal favorite in the series, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Now this was how it was supposed to be done. There's something about Mary. Troop Beverly Hills. I used to love watching this one along, you know, with my sister. Corny, cute girls movie. Two Lane Blacktop from the Criterion Collection. A slow moving car film. Veronica Guerin, like I mentioned, that I kind of have a thing for Kate Blanchett. A very Brady sequel, the funniest movie ever. <laughs> Village of the Damned. The Virgin Suicides, I love this movie. The War of the Roses. This is almost like a funny, it's a black comedy. Think of like if Fatal Attraction was funny. The Weatherman with Nicolas Cage. This is like a weird one, depressing, but I really like this movie. The Wicker Man, classic horror film here. If you like Midsummer, check out The Wicker Man. Wild Things. Wishmaster. This is a really gory movie for a late 90s movie. This is pretty good. With Honors. I used to love watching this one with Brendan Fraser and Joe Pesci. Uh, about Joe Pesci is like a, a homeless bum who stays in Brendan Fraser's van at Harvard. And finally, Wolf Creek, the unrated and the rated. I bought the rated because I really liked the poster. A lot of great cinematography in this film. And it's also very brutal. It's kind of like Texas Chainsaw, Last House on the Left. So, you know, I love those types of films. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, a thumbs down, subscribe, comment, and share. And I'll see you in the next one.